Hi, I'm John Hood. I'm the author of a series of historical fantasy novels called The Folklore Cycle. The first book of the series, Mountain Folk, came out last year. The second book in the series, Forest Folk, is about to be published. This is the first in a series of videos we've prepared to give you an advanced look at the fascinating and rather fantastic world of forest folk. The first book in the series, Mountain Folk, used elements of history, folklore, and epic fantasy to tell the story of the American Revolution in a new way. That book was set during the latter half of the 1700s. Forest Folk picks up the tale at that point and carries it into the 1830s. In the early 19th century, the American Republic was still young. Its constitutional traditions were largely untested. That would change as the country faced new challenges, foreign and domestic. Among the events depicted in Forest Folk are the War of 1812, the rise of the abolitionist movement, and the Trail of Tears. You can tell from the title of my first book that mountains play a towering role, so to speak, in the plot of that story. Well, in Forest Folk, my characters spend a lot of time in the woods. I'm speaking to you from one of the key settings of Forest Folk, Spirit Creek, which you can hear bubbling just behind me, and the larger Spirit Creek Forest, which is located just south of Augusta, Georgia. Spirit Forest, as it's called in my book, is the home of a bustling colony of elves who immigrated to America during colonial days. Shadowy elf rangers really lean into the name and try to intimidate any visitors who might venture into their domain by calling themselves spirits of the forest. By no means is it the only woodland setting for forest folk. Another key character in the book is an enslaved woman named Belle. She lives in New York's Hudson River Valley and has a special place in the woods. She calls it My Willow Place, where she flees persecution and says her prayers to God. Her father, by the way, is a tall African-American slave named James Bonfrey. In the language of their Dutch slave masters, that means James Free Tree. Although he spends most of his life in bondage, James never surrenders his nobility or his hope. Ultimately, his daughter Belle becomes an abolitionist leader. One of the most dramatic scenes in Forest Folk also takes place among the trees near a river in Canada called the Thames. That's where the Indian leader Tecumseh, an ally of the British during the War of 1812, fights his last battle. Although on the run from the American army for several days, Tecumseh and his chiefs actually came up with a pretty good plan for ambushing their foes in the woods. Unfortunately for them, their British allies were not as committed or as capable. History records the result of the Battle of the Thames. Now, in my version though, there is more going on than meets the eye. Forest Folk is, after all, a fantasy novel. It's not a textbook. While I'm on the subject of the fantastic, there are two other bits of forest-related lore I ought to tell you about. Both are the creations of 19th century American authors, but both are also based in part on actual American folktales. The first is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. That's the one in which Ichabod Crane is chased through the woods by the Headless Horseman. All three fellas, Ichabod Crane, the Headless Horseman, and Washington Irving himself, are characters in my book. I kid you not. Another folklore character in Forest Folk is named John. He's a slippery rascal, that brother John, always one step ahead of his enemies, and all the while inspiring hope among an oppressed people. Whatever you do, though, please, please don't throw him in that briar patch. In future videos, I'll tell you even more about the world of forest folk. You can learn more for yourself by visiting forestfolkbook.com, or you can check out the Folklore Cycle channel on YouTube. We'll be giving you more information there about how you can order forest folk as a paperback, a digital copy, or an audiobook. See you soon. Thank you.